Hey, so I just wanted to put together a short video and talk a little bit about social analytics and information commodification. I woke up this morning thinking a bit about this. So, for example, on each and every social network you have a multi-dimensional social graph which represents as many aspects, as many facets of that person's interaction on that network as marketers can think uh, would be useful to them. Um, on YouTube you've got all these uh, statistics available for each of your videos as well as your channel and you can make them publicly available. I think they are made publicly available by default, or at least they are on my channel. Anyway, um, so I was watching a video a week or so back and it was saying that there's a sort of taboo about the dislike button. Um, people do not like to receive dislikes. Um, and there's even been some discussion off of YouTube uh, to remove the dislike button so people can only like videos and of course that has caused a bit of a stir um, whenever this discussion took place, I didn't bother to check that out but um, I think it's been an ongoing uh, discussion and um, besides the reasons that were put forward in uh, the video of you know the taboo on dislike button um, I think there's there's a few other reasons as well. One I guess you could draw here would be uh, the the millennial generation and the generation Z are are sort of typically thought to be a sort of mollycoddled generation who can't take criticism, which I think has some validity. Um, but I think more than anything else, people are actually being programmed by their user experiences and their interaction on social networks. As Douglas Shreshkov would say, a program will be programmed. And I think probably the, the best example of this is there was a study done to show that people actually get dopamine hits when they get new notifications on Facebook. So that creates an, an addiction. Um, it naturally leads to an addictive um, interaction with social networks. So, you know, you can be damn sure that marketers are, are using this sort of information to make the social networks as appealing, as addictive, or whatever as possible. Um, and it makes sense that the same sort of dopamine hits are being generated elsewhere through other metrics on other social networks. So, for example, on YouTube, if you've got a video and it's got loads of likes, it might make you feel a bit better about yourself. If you've got dislikes on that video, um, it's almost like you know those dislikes have have put a um, a limit on your on your dopamine high, and I guess you can see this kind of thing elsewhere where people give unwarranted power to to reification to symbols, um, like on and then back in the days of MySpace or early days of Facebook. I don't know, it probably still goes on where people would actually buy friendship. They would buy um, connections to other people. Um, because that made them feel better about themselves, and it, it's very sad, but it's like, um, you know, as as the procession of the simulacra continues to become more pervasive and into more facets of our lives, um, symbols, uh, symbols themselves carry more meaning than, than the things they refer to, and um, of course the, the process of symbolization is a reductive process. You know, there's only at each time a, a new symbol is is created with a recursive symbol. It's reducing uh, an element of reality that it, it's it's referring to. Um, so naturally, as we become more digital, there is a loss of quality in people's interactions and people's communications. Um, and I know, for example, Douglas Rushkoff points this out, like on Facebook, there's this, this very sort of two-dimensional um, representation of a person's, um, maybe a person's gender or, or something like that. Um, it's like, do you fit in this box or this box? You're, you're not given, you know, you're, you're, not, you're not able to qualitatively, you know, say who you are, for example. Um, I don't use Facebook, so I don't know if that's still the case, but um, what I'm trying to say is that with digitalization there is um, inherently a sort of reductive element, a, a quantitative element, and, and we're sort of left, um, I think a lot of the alienation that people feel, of, of course, is from the sort of the symbolization, the, the, um, the sort of falling back on quantity to mediate people's relationships.